Caring for animals does not refer only to feeding strays or giving your dog a bath. It means caring and loving all of nature and respecting the global eco-balance. To care means to be responsible. Some of our acts in the past century remind us of what carelessness and irresponsibility we are capable of. One such example is the global misbalance with the invasive terrapin species Trahemus scripta elegans, commonly known as the red-eared slider. It received its name after the red-eared patches on both sides of its head. The pets that marked the 20th century. Red-eared slider. People have been coexisting with animals since the dawn of time. Having a pet or pets is one of the most beautiful and rewarding experiences that brings relaxation into your life. Nowadays, modern families of the 21st century choose reptiles as pets. You don't need to walk a snake, turtle, or lizard. You don't have to feed them every day, and you don't have to take them outside to do their thing. Yet these small pets will bring new and big responsibilities in your life. The red-eared slider has a long history in the pet trade, especially in the last two decades of the 20th century, and it has been kept for many years by a wide variety of reptile hobbyists, both beginners and veterans. For years, they were sold in pet shops, and, unfortunately, nearly 60% of them died in their first year of life due to a lack of knowledge from the children who begged their parents to buy them. Red-eared sliders are omnivores, and in captivity, it is recommended to feed them with commercial turtle food or pellets to benefit proper growth and health. On occasion, you can offer them leafy greens, freeze-dried shrimp or krill, crickets, superworms, rosy red minnows, and even pinky mice. Don't feed them with cat or dog food, as it harms their liver. Captive born and raised red-eared sliders are more personable compared to wild red-eared sliders. At the slightest sound or movement, they will quickly slide into the water for cover. Captive bred red-eared sliders are the opposite. They will frequently swim up to you and beg for food. For mature red-eared sliders, you must provide adequate space, such as a tank with a sunlight lamp to ensure D3 vitamin. One third dry area and three fourths water for swimming. Having a pond might be a great solution as the red eared sliders love them. If you plan to keep them in a pond, make sure that you have an appropriate fence all around so the terrapin will not be able to escape. Believe it or not, sliders are excellent climbers. In the past century, when there was no internet or abundant literature on reptiles, people still bought red-eared sliders, which were popular and cute, and as small as a nickel. After a few years, when the terrapins would grow bigger, owners would have no idea what to do with them or where to keep them. So most were released into nearby ponds. The question that was not raised until recently is why the red-eared slider is the most common terrapin species in pet shops around the world. It's probably because they are the most adaptable and resilient of the terrapin species. Their natural habitat is North America, but in the last decade they have been spotted in many places in the world, with the exception of the extreme cold. The great enemy used to be nothing else but exploited small terrapins which were imported from Asian farms in massive quantities, mostly through illegal channels of the black market. Soon, the red-eared slider became one of the most invasive species in areas 
which wasn't originally their natural habitat, such as Canada, Australia, Europe, and Asia. Their conquering character makes the red-eared slider one of the most threatening and prolific animal species, able to endanger the existence of autochthonous flora and fauna, especially in and around fresh waters. In Australia, it is illegal for members of the public to import, keep, trade, or release red-eared sliders. Their import has been banned by the European Union and other specific countries. However, not many people know that this little creature was the inspiration for the world-famous Ninja Turtles back in 1984. Invasive red-eared sliders cause negative impacts in the ecosystems they occupy because they have certain advantages over the native populations. They also transmit diseases and displace the other turtle species with which they compete for food and breeding space. Even if you are positive that you want to have a red-eared slider as a pet, do not buy it. We should not support farming and the exploitation of this beautiful prehistoric creature which only wants to survive. Instead, we should try and adopt an abandoned red-eared slider, because this is how we show we care, and this is how we make change. So now that you have a new pet, we should make an adequate tank or pond, and start enjoying the responsibilities. Sex determination is really simple if the turtle is mature enough, meaning longer than 17 centimeters. Males tend to have longer claws on their front legs and significantly longer and wider tails. The plastron of a male is slightly on the concave side. Veterans can recognize a sharper shape of the head, which is also a relevant factor for sex determination. The female specimen is usually bigger than the males, don't have long claws, and their tails are visibly shorter and thinner than those of the male. With this fact in mind, and knowing how to distinguish males from females, it is recommendable to keep female red-eared sliders, as they require no special care, unlike males, which can be territorial and aggressive. Since the red-eared slider is considered invasive and threatening to other species, breeding is not recommended. But, if one plans to become a more serious reptile hobbyist, this is an excellent species to start with and to gain some experience. Before even starting, one should make sure that there are enough future owners who would like to adopt a red-eared slider. Once the suitable mating area is provided, there must be a mating family with sexually mature red-eared sliders. The mating family usually consists of one male, about 16 to 18 centimeters, and two or three females of about 20 centimeters. Create a dry nesting area with suitable compost, clean fresh water for swimming, sunlight, and fresh protein food with calcium additives. These are the crucial elements of the conditions needed for breeding. Mating activities for red-eared sliders usually occur between March and July and take place underwater. The male swims around and toward the female, and if she is receptive, she'll sink to the bottom for mating. After mating, the female spends extra time basking to keep her eggs warm. When she finds a perfect spot, using her rear legs, she will dig a hole 15 centimeters deep and 13 centimeters wide. A single adult can lay from three to 30 eggs, depending on the size and quality of life. One female can lay up to five clutches in the same year, and clutches are usually spaced from 12 to 36 days apart. Even the slightest vibration or rough movement can damage or kill the fertilized egg yolk. This is the main reason why the location of turtle eggs must always be marked. If the egg is turned upside down, it will eventually terminate the embryo, and the smallest movement will be fatal. I am a little bit careless because I am not handling them delicately. But this year I will dig the eggs out, only to show you how to do it- oops! 
or how not to do it. The sex of the red-eared slider is determined by the incubation temperature during the critical phases of the embryo's development. Males are produced when eggs are incubated at temperatures of 22 to 27 degrees Celsius, 72 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas females develop at warmer temperatures. It should be noted that despite some irresponsible pet owners, there were still many professional and dedicated red-eared slider breeders who created remarkable color variants of this terrapin. Do not follow the next tutorial and replicate the actions at home unless you are at least 17 years old, or ask any older member of your family to assist you doing it. So, if you want to breed red-eared sliders, you will need an incubator for your red-eared slider eggs. Now I will explain how to do it. All you need is a few basic tools and equipment, such as an old portable fridge, an electric bore, a few pieces of bent wood, scissors, metal rust-free wire net, some sand and moss, or vermiculite, a small plastic container with shutter for the eggs, a thermometer, and one aquarium heater with a thermostat. The first step is to thoroughly clean the portable fridge. For cleaning, do not use any kind of soap or glossiness concoction. Any trace of chemicals may damage the soft eggshell. Don't even use lime or lemon for neutralization. Just clean it with fresh water and that will be enough. While the fridge is drying, you can prepare the electric bore. Make a hole on the side of the fridge, but don't do this at home because it's not safe. Use a proper table with a proper vice clamp to fix the fridge or ask someone for help. When the hole is drilled, take the aquarium heater and cut the cable close to the electric plug. That's how the new homemade connection will stay outside and keep dry. Always connect the same colors and use a proper insulating tape to isolate the naked wires. Remember, it is highly recommended that this is done by someone who has experience in electric wiring because this is dangerous and highly risky if wrongly performed. When the cable is reconnected again, make a safe check before trying the heater. Next, clean the small plastic container and make holes on the sides of the shutter to prevent drops from falling directly on the eggs. Make holes on the bottom as w Oops, I broke mine. That will do just fine. We need this so the water can drain out of the container. Later you will see what water drops I am talking about. Then it's time to prepare the egg mixture in which you will place the eggs. Take the scissors and cut the moss into small pieces. When you are done, take the sand and mix it with the pieces of moss. The proportion of the mixture should be 60% moss, 40% fine sand. Then, add some clean water. My mixture needs more moss. I put more sand than I needed. The moss will keep the eggs wet and not let them dry, and the sand will provide better drainage of the water. That is how the warm water will circulate constantly around the eggs. This is an old school egg reptile formula. This is what was used back in the days when no vermiculite could be found on the market. I suggest that you use vermiculite if you can find it. But this formula has been tried many times and works. I personally have tested it on tortoise eggs and three out of the four hatched. I will take bricks just to show you how I did my first incubator back in 1999. Inside, I just laid the bricks alongside the other brick on the long side of the fridge and I laid down the net on top of the bricks. But back then I had a shorter and better heater that fit well with this one. I can make that version now. This one is cheap. So I personally doubt that the thermostat will remain precise for about two months. So I recommend you buy a high quality heater with a stable thermostat. But in this case, I will use a wooden frame that I created from pieces of bent wood. I need a hammer to stick the frame in the fridge. I don't drill holes to attach the frame because I don't want to lose temperature. So here you can see my system, how I am providing better temperature results. The egg container will be placed as high as possible in the incubator, where the concentration of hot air is highest. And that's how your aquarium heater will work with minimum power while maximizing heat. In this way, you will save electricity. Not much, but we always have to be careful when using power and other resources. One drop doesn't make an ocean, but a few thousand can make a pond. And even the smallest pond contains a large and complicated ecosystem. We're inside the house and searching for the best place to keep your incubator for the next two or three months. 
The location should be where the incubator won't bother anyone and no one will bother the incubator. Remember that when you put down the container with the eggs inside, the incubator must not be moved by anything or anyone. You need to open both the incubator and the container with the eggs every 24 hours so that some fresh air can enter into the hermetically closed incubator. Just leave them open for four to five minutes for some ventilation and then close it again. A clever thing to do would be to write a diary. Take notes every day for when you open the container. Write the daily temperature and the time you spend ventilating the eggs, either on a piece of paper or in your smartphone, including Celsius degrees, when the lid was opened, etc. This information will help you evaluate the functionality of the incubator and generally get more scientific experience about the incubating process of the terrapin eggs. For homework, learn about the hibernation process of the red-eared slider. Don't forget that if you miss something, you can always play back the video tutorial And remember that having an animal in your home, especially those that are not domestic, require responsibilities beyond regular pet care. They may have left the forest, the desert, the lake, the river, but a part of them will always remain wild. Take care of the animals. Show responsibility for our planet's creations. I care. Do you? The pets that mark the 20th century.